We just butchered 44 chickens yesterday, so what do we do with all the chicken guts? You could throw them away in the trash can, uh, but I would not recommend that because it gets stinky and it gets a lot of flies. Another thing you could do is compost them, but make sure you cover it with wood chips. You could also burn them. Make a big bonfire and just throw the guts in there and burn them. Hey pigs, I'm coming. But since we have our pigs, I cooked the innards and I'm gonna feed them the innards to the pigs. I know, it's gross. We are turning chicken guts into bacon. So it's basically broth. Some chicken broth, some gut broth. All right, pigs, here we go. Chicken gut broth, guys. Forgot to turn on the fence. Mmm, yeah, guys. Good morning. <laughs> Three weeks ago, we were gifted 20 quail. They're probably going to be effed up. Oh! oh my gosh. That's so tiny. Oh my gosh. Never thought we would raise quail just because they're so small and never thought it was worth it. But I figured, you know what? Let's try them out. In the past three weeks, we lost a few. So I think now we have about 16 quail. We've been keeping them in our homemade DIY chicken brooder, which has worked out pretty well. Now they're three weeks old and we need to make them a chicken tractor because I want to raise them out on pasture. Hey, quail nuggets. They're pretty much off the heat lamp. I'm just giving them water. We're giving them turkey starter feed, which has a higher protein. They flew out, one of them flew out the other day when we were changing the water out and we found it here on the ground. So we know that they're just starting to want to fly. They do not like to be held. They're very timid or they're, they're very scared. It's all right, it's all right. They're not like chickens where chickens kind of want to cuddle, but these guys do not. Hey guys, real quick, shout out to mom. Thank you for the shirt, mom. I got it, I love it, I love you, I miss you. Um, and uh, let's, keep, let's keep this video going. Back when we only had six egg layers, this chicken tractor was our chicken coop for our egg layers. It's the one that had the automatic chicken door in the bottom that opened up. I added a five gallon bucket for a nesting box. And actually this A-frame chicken coop was our very first chicken coop for our six egg layers. I meant for it to be portable, but it's definitely not. That's why it still sits here. Nothing wrong with it. It's just that it's super heavy. And that's the progression. It was that A-frame. It was that chicken tractor. All before I built this stationary chicken coop. I had that automatic coop door on that portable chicken tractor first, and then I moved it when I built this. That small chicken tractor is basically like this one for our meat birds, except it's smaller. This one is about half the size of that one over there. I still have the old wheel system on these. I need to put my new wheel system on the back here. It's a little bit more covered because it's for egg layers. And guys, we use this through all winter, 24 seven. Our egg layers lived in here and they did fine. It had snow on it. They were snowed in in here. I'll put a link of how I built this down below in the show notes. While I'm putting this together, let me talk to you guys about the chick lift, you guys. If you don't know about the chick lift, I'll leave a link down to a video I did last year on it. And let me tell you, it makes everything so simple when you want to move this chicken tractor. It's a family owned business made in Texas guys, made in the USA. So if you want links to where you want to purchase a chick lift for your own chicken tractor, I'll leave a link down below. And when you purchase, make sure you tell them Jason from So The Land sent you. I appreciate it. And uh, let's get back to it. We're almost done with this install. Now this chick lift comes with everything guys. These wheels, heavy duty, no flat. Rubber wheels. So we can take these. Don't need them. 
I'm gonna take off some of this nesting areas. We're not gonna need this bucket. I initially made this as a Dutch door. Luckily I saved the bottom piece because the bottom piece was the one that opened up with the automatic coop door. And that worked really well. I like the Dutch door with the uh, chickens. Um, but but with the quail, I don't, I don't think it, I think it would be in the way with the quail. Rather than buying more wood and build a totally brand new door, I'm just gonna use what I have here I'm just going to connect these two. We're gonna use these cups. So we're gonna use this setup for a quail. I did not like this setup for our Cornish cross chickens because they would be too rough with them and they'd like knock them over. They'd end up being like this and then they get no water. I'm gonna have to figure out a different setup, excuse me, a uh, different setup for these guys. Um, probably the nipple waters, but not, not the cups. I think these cups have to be fairly low to the ground for them. Maybe even like that. I might have to shorten this like I did the last one. Take this top part off. I feel like they might not really need it. All right, now the trick is we gotta get these quail down our hill inside our new chicken tractor. It just started raining also, so we're trying to beat the pour down rain. But uh, these guys may fly away. <laughs> no, I'm so afraid. We're gonna put them in this bucket with the lid. Hopefully, I think they'll be all right. This is how we move chickens. Yeah, but the chicks don't fly when we move them. So these guys have, we've already had one fly out. So pretty. Right. Oh, you might not need their water. They've got this one. Yeah, you need to put water in it though. Okay. Let me let me let me take this out. We have 14 of these guys. We lost a few in these last couple weeks. Water. Let's see if this is filling up. That is filling up. There we go. We got their feed. We put their other water in here just in case. And they're still trying to get used to everything. I don't think they're used to this grass. They've been in that brooder the whole time. I guess the one thing that you don't want is for them to fly away. So we have to be mindful of the door. We're still unsure if we're gonna raise some for eggs, but for the most part, these are gonna be for meat. This quail is gonna be ready for meat in about five weeks, the same day, same time as our Cornish crosses, and they're about the same age. First time raising quail, guys, so not sure how much I'm gonna be moving this chicken tractor or quail tractor uh, maybe every day or maybe every other day because they're very small. They produce little, tiny, cute little quail poops. But we'll see how it goes. 
you know, first time raising quail. And we're doing it on grass.